Blind to Solutions? Of Threats and Perfect Storm, NASA posted a very important video that shows a daily flicker above the Amazon forest, NASA, YouTube, 2014. Please keep in mind that the Amazon forest is larger than half of Europe and just smaller than the USA. Please also keep in mind that the period around the year 1970, the by many much feared increase of carbon dioxide, was about 1 ppm per year. What this flicker and numbers tell us is that daily in a 12-hour time span, daytime, the Amazon forest sucks out of the atmosphere above the Amazon forest a whopping 2 ppm of carbon dioxide, a kind of natural CDR in combination with the biotic pump and cooling. So, like the Amazon forest, any newly grown agroforest with similar soil, structure, and composition will do the same or much more. In other words, these agroforests also sequesters out of the atmosphere the same amount of carbon dioxide in ppm in a 12-hour span as the increase in ppm of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere caused by two years of global emissions. You hear that right? The Amazon forest can take out of the atmosphere in 12 hours what we add to the atmosphere above the Amazon forest and the whole world in two years. This is seen per square kilometer to be able to compare. This is a flabbergasting amount of sequestering of carbon dioxide that is registered by much research and by NASA. The thing is that NASA knows to measure it through the atmosphere with satellites and knows to visualize it in a video representing 365 days. Measurements, scientific research, from bottom to top of the Amazon forest, and consequently also of enriched agroforests, registered decrease of carbon dioxide in the air up to 50 ppm and more during the 12 hours of daytime. Agroforests in tropical and subtropical regions with similar soil or improved, enriched soil, structure and composition we call enriched agroforests in this and other videos. Such enriched agroforests, whose layers or strata of trees etc. fill a profile that can reach close to 100 meters of height, have the potential to produce 100 times more biomass than agriculture does. This is so because the biomass that produces even more biomass above and under the ground of these agroforests also is 100 times bigger to the same order of magnitude when compared to monoculture agriculture. All of this 100 times more biomass produced by such agroforests is edible and or serves as materials that can be and are used, also in industrial processes. If it is not eaten or used by humans, crops and material for products, and or domesticated animals, fodder, this extreme amount of produced biomass will somehow be eaten by the biodiversity of the forest and or mostly decompose, recycling and feeding the capacity of forest and soil to further enrich the trees etc. of this agroforest and of course the agroforests themselves, a mass of a kind of a natural fertilizer. In other words, if we could transform all of our not sustainable agriculture into sustainable agroforests, which as explained produce 100 times more, those agroforests also should daily suck out all human emissions of one year in a time span of 12 hours of daylight. While this is true, we need to manage and use certain products of the Amazon forest and the new agroforests to have a dramatic decreasing effect on the carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere at a global level. Even if we manage and use certain products, still a part of what is sequestered during daytime will not be transformed into organic material and will return to the forest environment and to the atmosphere at night. In a near to extreme case, we expect that over 90% would not return to the forest and atmosphere, which makes the accumulative sequestering over the course of one year extreme and close to the earlier mentioned numbers and speed. Should we even want such extreme sequestering out of the atmosphere? We surely should, but not by that much. Can we control the rate? Yes, we can control the rate over the course of the year and years very precisely. Would we need large machines? No, we do not need those at all. In fact, all large fossil fuel gobbling machines would become redundant. The industry would need to reform and produce a much larger number of light robots driven on solar, batteries, etc. What would we need? We would need lightweight robots. For now, we ask you to compare them to lightweight slots, forest animals, kind of slow and extreme energy-saving monkeys. 
Ideally, these lightweight robots would need to be automated as soon as possible and as much as possible, but maintenance and certain tasking and certain operations would need human control. That would be mostly remote controlled. That means a number of people and also deficient people and miners could harvest 100 times more from their homes than our global agribusiness can today. The operators of these robots could operate from anywhere in the world at any time or shift of the day. These operators would realize record productions of food and materials and also realize the solution of all of our threats, perfect storm that includes climate challenges. The operators and the robots could directly provide tree leaves for otherwise wild tapers and wild tropical forest deers that are on the brink of extinction. Let us not forget that the tropical forests themselves are too on the brink of collapse, massive fires, and irreversible extinction. Tapers on their turn are important for the regeneration and diversity of tropical forests and agroforests. Humans would have to decide if they would use milk and consume the meat of tapers in excess, instead of domesticated animals. Tapers as well as tropical and subtropical forest deers present very tasteful organic meat. Forest degradation and fragmentation, as well as hunting are amongst the reasons both are under threat of extinction. The combination of extreme organic production and extreme preservation of wild animals and biodiversity would give the younger people and certain other humans hope for the future. For children, this would be literally a play that could become addictive, especially if paid for, which it should because it would be one of the most important economic activities. Such games already exist and are even played by adults, but contrary to the subject of our video, of course, now we are speaking about the game of virtual farming that is not related to real agriculture, forestry, nor preservation. We just mention it to illustrate that we are able and willing to manage, harvest, and preserve and regenerate biodiversity, climate, and our planet. Of course, we are not there yet, because as said, we look to other more industry and or technological ways, but we should get there as soon as possible because our chances for prolonged existence with the needed quality of life are very slim already. Those who are realistic know. The rate of the increase of CO2 in the atmosphere and the rate of sea level rise have both more than doubled since the second half of the former century, and the rate is rising more and more, and more exponentially than linear. We can expect them and other threats to rise much quicker and possibly with shocks, since the world seems to get involved in a growing number of serious conflicts that are logically associated with and caused by the seriousness and damages and losses caused by the already known threats to humanity and existence. There is lots of hope out there, but we have to stop blinding ourselves to reality and the present and needed potentials and solutions, like at the very base the systematic enrichment of agroforests. Is there any evidence of this? Yes, there is, and this evidence is presented in separate dedicated videos. 1. Advanced and grand cultures in the past were based on the enrichment of agroforests and from enriched agroforest-derived techniques. At the very base stand Asian cultures, like also the Indus Valley culture, and at the root the Amerindians of the Amazon forest that were the builders of the Amazon dark earth soils, and at least partly of the Amazon forest at its peak. And it is exactly what is left over of this peak Amazon forest that shows us the potential, NASA flicker, and the model agroforest for our future. 2. There is evidence that periods with significant maturation of enriched agroforests caused smaller and larger ice ages in the past, figures. At least part of this evidence is presented in other videos. 3. We participated in a long-term and large-scale scientific research where we humans, together with a team composed of Amazon Amerindians, were able to increase the production and regeneration of the Amazon forest by a whopping 150% to 250% that latest for 16 years, and this without machines, robots, and without any significant human labor. Only once in 16 years. As a secondary, but anticipated, effect the 1,000 hectare of Amazon forest naturally regenerated a number already extinct species, amongst others greenheart, with seedlings, sometimes as much as hundreds per square meter. While we, the researchers, 
thought this was a by us newly invented technique. Other researchers discovered that the Amazon Amarins used the same technique spread over the Amazon forest in a relatively deep past, much more than 500 years ago. In fact, once their whole culture evolved around this technique of enriching agroforests. Thank you for watching.